What is it rated? Uh, it's PG. Well, 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 if it isn't you people again. <laughs> Just kidding, I'm so happy to see you guys. Welcome back to me making fun of terrible movies or sometimes decent movies that I secretly love. You know what else I love? Rob Van Winkle. Ah! You guys may know Rob Van Winkle as the guy who flips houses on DIY Network. I flipped houses. But before all of that, he was known for something much bigger, much more important, much more notorious. He was on this really weird reality show called The Surreal Life. <laughs> And even before that, he was known for his multi-platinum record, Ice Ice Baby. You better hit bulls out of kid. Don't act like you didn't like that song. But if you didn't, you probably at least liked that Ninja Turtle rap. Go, Ninja, go, Ninja, go. I heard that song for the first time the other day, and for a minimum of three days straight, I was just go, Ninja, go, Ninja, go. Go. Anyway, so we've established that you know who Vanilla Ice is, you know him for all of these things, but what you may not know him for is his 1991 atrocity of a film, Cool as Ice. <gasps> Starring Rob Van Winkle himself, Kristen Minter, Naomi Campbell for some reason, and this guy. Yeah. <laughs> Yikes. Friends, sometimes movies are so great that they can change our very lives and the way we look at cinema. Some such movies may be even coming to your head right now. Movies such as Forrest Gump, Gone with the Wind, or Sharknado 2, the second one. Well, if you think movies like those are the best kinds of movies, well, you don't know I, Snay. You don't know him at all. You don't know me. You don't know me at all. One might even say that you have a heart of stone, but that's okay because I have the solution to melting a heart of stone. You just add ice. Well, that doesn't make any sense, does it? But that's literally what it says on the back of this DVD. <laughs> when a girl has a heart of stone, there's only one way to melt it, just add ice. Nope. So kids, put on your swishy pants. Let's bust a move to cool as ice. Let's geo. Today's episode is brought to you by HelloFresh. HelloFresh is America's number one meal kit subscription service. Get mouthwatering seasonal recipes and fresh pre-measured ingredients delivered right to your door. HelloFresh offers tons of recipes each week to help you break out of your recipe rut. Stop making the same things every week. Jamie, you don't need all this here fancy food. Just stick to good old man anyway. What? No, Tammy, this is all fresh. See, it's produce. It comes straight from farmers. Like, like Farmer Bob farmers? He's a looker. Hey, ain't, ain't this gonna take forever? I got stuff to do. Well, you're saving a trip to the grocery store because this gets delivered to your house. Yeah, the average trip to the grocery store takes like, 41 minutes, but you can skip the trip and have everything you need for each recipe delivered right to your doorstep. I don't know if the delivery man could get it on my porch. My, my porch is awful rickety. Will they deliver to a rickety porch? Yes, silly, they deliver to all porches. That's right, friends. They even deliver to rickety porches. But like, if there's a rotten board, just try to fix it because the delivery guy could get hurt. Just going upset my gallbladder or my bowels. No. That's right, friends. Don't worry about your gallbladders, okay? HelloFresh has plenty of healthy options to choose from, from low carb, smart carb, calorie conscious, vegan or vegetarian or pescatarian, whatever that is. They have it. Not to mention everything is sourced directly from farmers. I'm talking farm to table. It's fresh. This looks awfully expensive, Jamie. Is it expensive? You can use code Jamie said 14 at checkout for 14 free meals plus free shipping. Well, dang. <laughs> Free, free is cheap, free is cheaper than a can of scanty. That's right, kids. Visit HelloFresh.com and use code JamieSaid14 to get 14 free meals plus free shipping. Thanks again, HelloFresh, for sponsoring today's video. And now, back to the show. Dang, dang, that's good. I'm gonna, I'm gonna save some for later. Hey kids, we're back. So the movie opens with a lady yelling, <laughs> and I don't understand why it's Naomi Campbell. Naomi, <laughs> how could you? I just watched your house tour on Architectural Digest the other day. You're so classy. I just love these, these are my favorite. Anyway, Vanilla Ice is dancing so hard. <laughs> <laughs> what? 
Wait, is that him? Is that Rob Van Winkle? More famously known as Vanilla Eyes? If so, he's actually a really good dancer. I like the opening credits. We find out Caroline Biggerstaff was the editor. Well, Caroline, next time you edit a movie, I think you need a bigger staff. This intro is long AF, but at least the lyrics are good. Don't be scared to take off your clothes. Wait. If you're really short, get on your toes. I take that back. So Vanilla Ice is leaving the club. He's showing off his brick wall haircut. <laughs> we get our first glimpse of his crew. We got Jazz, we got Sir D, and we got Princess, my personal fave. So they have this really long drive. They drive all through the night. So I'm guessing they played at like an out of town show or something. So the next morning on their way home, Vanilla Ice notices a pretty girl riding a horse. <laughs> So naturally, he almost kills her. I actually want to know how exactly he bunny hopped this five foot fence without a ramp. He must have a special vanilla ice bike that can do things that are cool as ice. Anyway, this girl is not happy, understandably so. She like punches him in the gut. By the way, I want to point out Vanilla Ice's glasses here. They're full. You can see all kinds of stuff in them. Crew members, camera equipment, this girl sitting on a fence when she's supposed to be on a horse. It's a neat time. So enter the town of, I actually don't know the name of the town. It looks like Whoville. Look at these trees. Into the thick of it. So by the way, Vanilla Ice's name in this movie is John, but I will be lovingly referring to him as Vanilla Ice, Ice, or Rob Van Winkle. Basically everybody except his character name. So Ice and all his friends have to stop in the middle of the road because this guy's bike is tripping again. And people are, they're ticked. <laughs> Just look at this guy. He's like, come on, hurry up. I gotta get to my job at Blockbuster as the rewind guy. Let's go. So they pull up to this weird house. I'm sorry. This crazy whacked house. Check out this crazy whacked house. And after watching this a few times, it's still kind of unclear to me who these people are that own this house. I know that they're like bike fixers, like the guy, Roscoe, he's a mechanic, I guess. But they're also other types of people. They got tons of globes in their front yard. They got doors with riddles about eggs on them. They're just weird people. Say what? And they're like, oh, hey, actually, I can fix your friend's bike. It was a weird conversation. I wanted to understand what was happening, but I was just so distracted by the world's loudest circus music playing in the background. Who edited this audio? Point of this scene being they agree to let these weird people, Roscoe and May, fix Jazz's bike. Fix his hoopty. And they just kind of go inside and wait while helping themselves to Roscoe and May's delicious food. <gasps> the freaking pickle and peanut butter sandwich. <laughs> Jamie. Don't knock until you try it. Okay. So Vanilla Ice is practicing his moves while he waits and it's just really fun because they like didn't change the background music to suit what was happening on camera. So he's dancing to this. <laughs> What's even funnier though is to picture how it really sounded when they were shooting. Come here, come here. It just gets weirder. Princess is using giant salt and pepper shakers. Sir D is asleep. It's the weirdest thing I've ever seen. So while Ice is practicing his dance move, he suddenly spots that girl from earlier, you know, that he almost killed. He's like, oh yeah. Oh yeah. Not only did I knock a ruffle horse, now I know where she lives. <laughs> so we find out the horse girl's name is Kathy, AKA Cat. Oh, well, which is it, Kathy? Kathy. Mm-hmm. She's got a boyfriend, Nick, who everybody thinks is a Morning. They said it, not me. He lays some serious swag on her in the most quotable line of this whole movie. Drop that zero and get with the hero. <laughs> Excuse and what kills me is she is totally falling for it. I would not have fallen for his crap. How you doing? Fine, I guess. And the horse? You kind of hurt his feelings. Yeah, you, you, you called him a cat and he's a horse. Oh yeah. Yeah, he's a horse, not a cat. Cat. No horse. You know a horse. Yeah, like a horse. Man. Horse. Like you ride on the back of a. <laughs> and on that note, friends, we gotta take a break. And when we come back, Vanilla Ice is gonna beatbox for us. See you there. So it turns out that during John and Kat's very romantic encounter, John actually stole Kat's little black book. I'm sorry, her black bookie. 
Looky, 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 and Cat's Black Bookie. His friend thinks it's great. That's very great. What I think is very great is his Doug-esque beatboxing that he graces us with. This one sounded like. So then we make Cat's little brother, Tommy, and I just think it's kind of funny because this kid who plays Tommy, I'm pretty sure his name was also Tommy in the Sandlot, right? Shut up, Tommy. Never mind. He was Timmy in the Samlot. Samlot? Sandlot. Like I said, Tommy is Cat's little brother. He's really fun. Thought maybe we could go for a ride. And they're all kind of watching the news as a family. Cat is like on the news for her escapades and equestrianism. I don't think that's the word. She's a very accomplished horse rider. <laughs> John and the crew are just still chilling at the weird pickle mechanics house. They're just eating their food, watching their plant TV, making themselves at home. So in addition to Kat's family and Vanilla Ice's crew who are all watching this on TV at the same time, there's also these shady characters. This guy Clark, he recognizes Kat's dad despite his valiant effort to conceal his face on camera. Who do you think you're fooling? Hey, if I go like this, do you guys not know it's me anymore? At least he doesn't look like a geek at all. Dad, you don't look like a geek at all. So the point of this is that Somebody from Cat's dad's past is now hot on his trail. Can't believe it's out. Remember that. Meanwhile, Cat has noticed that her little black bookie is gone. G A W N gone. And she's like, you know what? I think that goofy looking brick wall haircut dude that almost killed me must have stolen it. Gotta go get it back. <laughs> I don't know exactly how to get it back. Way too excited to see this guy again. Back at that weird mechanic house, Roscoe and his wife are making weird noises. Hooray! What the hell are they doing out there? And Isis crew, they're like sick of waiting. They're like, yo, we've been here way too long eating your pickle and peanut butter. Where's my bike? What's taking so long? Where's my bike? <laughs> he really is a genius. That's not what he asked me. Although I agree with you. Yeah. So it turns out this Roscoe guy is maybe not the best mechanic in the world and he straight up took apart Jazz's bike. <laughs> so unfortunately, they're just gonna have to be there a lot longer. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. And you know, on one hand, it's like I empathize with Jazz, I would be really upset, but I'm so glad that this happened because it means the movie gets to continue and this is my favorite movie. Meanwhile, the bad guys who were looking for Cat's dad are stopped on the side of the road for some reason, but the one bad guy, the skinny bad guy, he is hungry. I'm starving. Hot wings, french fries, soft Yelp. drinks. Get me a lot of hamburgers. A lot of hamburgers? A lot of hamburgers. Define a lot of hamburgers. Like, I feel like most people can eat one, maybe two too if you're really hungry. You eat a lot of hamburgers, you get a problem. <laughs> Meanwhile, they just keep showing clips of like Roscoe hammering away at Jazz's bike and the audio editing is just on fleek. Again, I agree with May. Then suddenly, Vanilla Ice in his entire new outfit that I guess he just had with him somehow, he wants to go do an activity. Cross the street to uh, sling a schlong. I'm sorry, what? what? Ah, yes. How could I forget? The ancient art of schlong schlinging. This was a regular activity in the late 80s, early 90s, right up there with- Hey, dude, we're going to Ashlight. You wanna come? What? I like Roscoe's wife. I like me. <laughs> so Vanilla Ice strolls himself on over to Cat's front door. <laughs> he graces her with one knock. That's how people who are cool as ice knock. <laughs> I have to stop doing that. So he's looking for Cat, but all he finds is her mom and brother. He finds out she's at the Sugar Shack. The Sugar Shack. Sugar Shack. Sugar Shack. Sugar Shack. Sling a schlong. And they let me change the script. They let me change certain, you know, phrases the way I would say them. He gets directions from those bad guys who are just like chilling outside of Cat's house. Isn't the point of stalking someone to not be seen? Like to be inconspicuous, if you will? They're not. They're just like chilling outside, eating their burgers. <laughs> Actually, they're not really eating it. They're just like chewing their burgers burgers and spitting them out. Come on, let's go. Oh my God. <laughs> I don't understand. Just cause your friend said let's go doesn't mean you have to stop chewing. Like you can chew and get back in the car. <laughs> Cut over to the sugar shack and these dudes are just jamming hard. A lot of hard jamming in this movie. Let's start chasing. Nah, I was all. Why don't you try dancing? Gee, I don't know. Maybe it's cause of this music that's playing. How could you dance to this? On the top. Oh, that's how. So Cat and Vanilla Ice spot each other from across the room and oh, she is just smitten as all get out. How could you not be? Look at this outfit. That outfit actually goes insanely hard. So back over at Cat's, her dad just doesn't seem to care that the dudes he was hiding out from have oh. found him. They knock on the door and he answers it. He doesn't even... 
whatever. And they're all like, Jimmy, hey, what's good, Jim? James, Jim, Jimmy, Jimbo. Hey. And he's like, no, 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 I'm Gordon. My name is Gordon Winslow. Meanwhile, Vanilla Ice is putting on the most amazing performance. Oh yeah, funky lyrics. He kicks those other guys off stage, rightfully so, and he spits some very Vanilla Ice-esque lyrics at us. You're a nerd, I'm first to third, it's absurd to think that you heard better rhymes than these. I don't know, I feel like I've maybe heard better rhymes than these. I wasn't really feeling this rap, but this guy is like, yas, Vanilla Ice is bae. He grabs Kat, she's dancing, she's like, yas, I got this sweater at Marshall's. He dips her like 19, I don't know what year they dipped people, forget it. They dance hard and somehow after all of that dancing, Ice's hair remains perfectly quaffed into this Pillsbury Crescent roll. Stop it, get some help. Finally him and Kat start talking. They actually have a conversation. She's like, yo, you stole my black bookie. I don't like you. In fact, I'm calling the cops. I'm gonna call the cops. A conversation which his friends somehow heard from across the club where live music is playing. Yeah. Come on, Carolyn, bigger staff. Where were you on that one? Just kidding. Nick comes up, he gets super aggressive. Hey, I'm talking to you. Now I know why everybody thinks he's a- See you later, Dick. So somehow John and the bad guys happen to show up at the exact same time when Kat is like walking home by herself. And John somehow knows that they're bad guys. And he's like, get on. Come on, get on. Hurry up, get on. How could he know that they're bad guys? Like he talked to him earlier. They were the ones that gave him directions to the sugar shack. Were they chasing her? They already know where she lives, right? How come no one's hiding from them? I have so many questions. Meanwhile, Nick and his friends, they're messing up Sir D's bike. They're like taking a baseball bat to it. Not mine, Sir D's. Who's Sir D? <laughs> My homeboy. Homeboy this. Ice catches him, it turns into a rumble with amazing audio editing. <laughs> but who are those people back there? So the next morning, this is my favorite scene of the movie by far. Vanilla Ice wakes Cat up in the wildest way possible. He drips his nasty like hand water into her open sleeping mouth. <laughs> you don't know where that hand has been. Whoop. I don't know about you guys, but I would totally go for that. But knowing Nick, he wouldn't do it with ice. He would probably do it with like string cheese or something. I'm saying hammer. We don't want to wake up mom and dad. Him and Kat have this really kind of creepy exchange. It's supposed to be romantic, but it's gross. <clears throat> hmm. I just don't get it. He almost killed her, <laughs> stole her property, broke into her home, got in bed with her, gagged her with ice water, and she's super into him. It's all so attractive. They're about to like hook up or something, but thankfully we don't have to witness it because Tommy walks in. Mom says, Tommy, get out of here. Don't you hate that when little kids ruin the romantic moment? <sighs> you scared me there with that cheese stick. <laughs> Snuck in like a ninja. Hmm. Speaking of ninjas, I've been thinking a lot about your Ninja Turtle rap song. Do you think I could come tonight to your music video shoot? I just, I really want to go there and see you. You're seeing me now. <sighs> because the song, it just like makes me feel alive, you know? <laughs> go ninja. Go ninja, go. Hey, I smell a booger. Tommy, get out of here. So after this very romantic encounter, Rob Van Winkle is just what? on what? cloud nine. He's smiling, he's jumping. Cat comes out and she can't remember how to open the gate to her house, even though she's lived there her whole life. She gets on his bike. It was a really cute moment. Rose petals came flying out of nowhere. Her spanks are showing. It is so romantic. Weird song choice, but I like it. My family tells me the same thing. So right here is where we get our first just epic montage. Ice and Cat are on a date, and by date I mean frolicking and looking at each other at a construction site. <laughs> I 
Like, <laughs> honestly, what kind of date is this? They're not even like playing hide and seek. They're just frolicking. Like, gosh, yes. I want to look at you through these two by fours. Honestly, though, I kind of want to do that with Nick. Hey, hey, you youngsters. Get off my job site. They finally had their first kiss, and as you may have guessed, it's gross. Mm. Way too soon to let out that moan. You gotta get more comfortable in your relationship before you make weird noises. Just my opinion. Mm. So then we're blessed with yet another amazing montage of them falling in love. If you liked Aaron Carter and that one girl frolicking on the beach with a dolphin, then you will love Vanilla Ice frolicking in a field with a horse. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Why are they messing with this poor horse? The horse didn't do anything to them. <laughs> oh, he got away. That's very great. The background music is just... <laughs> what? Closer than most, but not closer than all. You're like in the 12th percentile of closeness, basically. I love how Vanilla Ice like tosses his hair out of the way. He's like, oh, this wind, man. So Channing looked this song up and it turns out that this song is not actually on the Cool As I soundtrack. It's almost as though Rob Van Winkle knew it was terrible because he's a good judge of that. I'm just kidding, by the way. I want to like establish that I actually like Vanilla Ice, okay? I think he's a neat guy. I'm just making fun of this movie, okay? Relax. So Ice kisses Cat goodnight like a true gentleman and then her dad comes out and he's all like, Catherine, where have you been? I don't like this young man. I've seen him and his two friends. But dad, you don't understand. No, young lady, you don't understand. Nick wound up in the hospital last night. Seems your friend put him there. Did you do that? Yeah, yeah. That's one thing I can say about Rob Van Winkle is he's really mastered the art of affirmative phrases. Whether it's yep, yep, or oh yeah. Yep, yep. Oh yeah, yeah. Yep, yep. Oh yeah. Yep, yep. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You know he means business. Anyway, the point of this scene is that Kat's dad thinks the burger spitting boneheads and John are friends because he saw them talking. But he's mistaken. They're not John's friends. They're his foes. Hey, 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 hey. Take a ride, huh? <laughs> come back and pay a friend a visit at the dock. Come back and pay a friend a visit at the dock. Schmucks. Back at the pickle people's house, things are weird. Stop it. I guess since Sir D's bike wasn't gonna be fixed for a while, they decided to just stay the night with the mechanics. It's actually a legit idea. Like next time I go to Dobbs or something and my car is not ready, I'm gonna be like, sleepover. Oh, hey, welcome to Firestone. How can I help you? Hi, I'm just here to pick up my car. Okay, let's see here. Oh, you know what? I'm sorry. It's actually not gonna be ready till tomorrow. Oh, okay. Well. No problem, I'll go grab my sleeping bag and we'll just, we'll make a night of it. Wait, um, you can just come back tomorrow and, and pick it up. Got it'll my be, blankie. It'll be ready. <laughs> Where's my bed? Um, actually, ma'am, we, we don't allow customers to sleep here. Um, okay, she's, she's doing it. We got another weirdo. So Kat's dad ends up confessing to her that his name is actually Jimmy and that he's been in the witness protection program for literally her entire life. He's literally a different person. He was a cop or something, got in with the wrong people. Now he owes the burger spitters like $500,000. I don't know, it doesn't really matter. And also during this conversation, he tells her that she can no longer see John. I want you to stay away from him. And she is devastated. She's like, no, not my one true love that I've known for 24 hours and broke into my home and dripped an ice cube into my open sleeping mouth. <laughs> so she goes outside to break it to John and there's a lot of, a lot of no's. No. 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 So yes? Is that what? Is that what you said? No. It was a really emotional moment. Kat's like, you know, John, you know, sometimes, sometimes I, think I think I know, I know you. you. Yeah, you know, sometimes in the last 36 hours, she thinks she knows you. But then how can you know somebody that you just met, right? Correct. Anyway, Ice is like, you know what, fine. He rides off into the distance on his suddenly Harley Davidson chopper sounding street bike. A far cry from the space shuttle sounds it was making in the beginning of the movie. 
There's kind of another little epic montage. Ow. There's another montage. I don't even know how you would describe what kind of montage this is. There's some fish, a porch swing. I don't understand these shots that the camera people took. It's got different camera angles and everything. And also the song choice is just, it's not montage. It's not a montage song in my opinion. Look at Rob Van Winkle just laying there on that weird couch. You know what? I think Vanilla Ice is hot. I said it. I said it. Sue me. He's hot. I think he's hot. In fact, I think he's fine. Get over it. There's more dancing in the montage. I just don't get this. Vanilla Ice's friends are constantly <laughs> dancing at the bike mechanic's house. It's just not something I would do at a place I took my vehicle to be fixed, but who am I? Just nobody. Tommy shows up out of nowhere and Vanilla Ice ends up taking him for a ride. They drive by Nick and he flips him off. And Nick's like, what the heck, yo? What did I do? All I did was sit here incredibly high up in my convertible seat so that my head was over the windshield. Jeez. Meanwhile, and by meanwhile, I mean later that day, Day. Tommy is just chilling, playing video games or something when the bad guys come in and they're gonna get him. I'm gonna get you, I'm gonna get you. Watch out, Tommy, you don't wanna be gotten. Oh, never mind, he's gotten. Where did you think you were going, pal? Gotcha! He got gotten. Gotcha! But you know what? I don't get this, okay? I don't get it because Tommy was supposed to be at Little League, okay? So the bad guys didn't even know that he was gonna be home. And they even like act confused about it. So what do we, uh, what can we got here? What are you doing here? Well, well, what do you want? Yeah, why aren't you a little league? And yet their kidnapping seems kind of planned. Explain it to me. What were you gonna do if Tommy wasn't there? What was your master plan? Pothole. Meanwhile, Ice's friends are trying to convince him that he needs to go say goodbye to Cap before they leave the weird bike people's house. He's like, no way, never. No way, never. You really got me bent. Like how bent though? Like Rob Thomas bent? Ice is so fine. So the parents get home and they realize that Tommy is not there. He's nowhere to be found. No, Ice knocks on their door. Yo, <laughs> you ain't good enough for the socially acceptable four knocks. You get one. And the dad just calmly answers like, oh yeah, hey man, cat's not here. She's right behind you. Never mind that my other child is straight up missing. So Vanilla Ice gives Cat's dad this envelope that he found on their doorstep. It's like a cassette tape from the bad guys. <laughs> but I don't get it, okay? The bad guys broke into their house, stole their kid, but when it came time to leave their ransom tape, they packaged it in a manila envelope and politely placed it on the front porch. Cool, like a couple decent UPS workers. Doesn't add up. Anyway, they opened the package, they put the tape into this tape player. That tape player <laughs> is so metal. It is da bomb. So the tape is a recording of Tommy. It's like a ransom tape, okay? And it's a really good tape, just, just listen. Hi, Mom, Dad, Kathy. I am making this tape to tell you what a very good time I'm having with my new friends. They've told me a lot about you, Dad. I do not think you have treated them fair. I will stay here till you do. If you change your mind in the next 24 hours, I will come home. If you don't, I won't. Hold the phone. Why did I write hold the phone? I don't know. So because John is the one who handed Kat's dad the tape, the ransom tape, he assumes that he had something to do with Tommy's disappearance. Jesus, Kathy, you really think he came to see you? He was here to deliver this. First of all, Jimmy, it's stupid that you would think that, okay? Second of all, why have you still not called the cops? Like so much time has passed that even Nick has showed up there now and like had a conversation. Tommy, wait, I just saw Tommy. Still no one has reported that Tommy is missing. Parenting 101. <laughs> so like I said, Nick shows up. What are you doing here, Nick? He makes it even worse for John. He's like, yeah, I think John's the one who kidnapped Tommy. I, I knew something was wrong. You looked really scared. You looked really scared. So finally the dad's like, all right, enough is enough. I'm calling the police. Cat's all like, no, no. You don't want your brother to be found? I'm calling the police. No, don't. I'm calling the police. No. You don't want your brother? She takes the tape and she runs across the street to Vanilla Ice and his friends and they're jamming hard. <laughs> They're still at the mechanic's house for some reason, even though like an hour prior they said the bike was fixed and that they were gonna be gone for good. We gone, man, for good. They just really like it there. Can't blame them. Yeah. Anyway, Kat's like, I need to talk to you. But Vanilla Ice is all like, you need a psychiatrist and you need a different hairstyle, young man. <laughs> Whew. 
Whew, you know what guys, we gotta take a break. It's been a while. I need a drink and a pickle peanut butter sandwich. Don't go anywhere, don't miss the climax. It's a good one. See you there. Hey guys, we're back. <laughs> Where were we? Ah, uh, yes. Cat telling Johnny that she needs to talk to him. And you can't really hear it because of how ungodly loud the background music is. I need to talk to you. But she's like, Johnny, my brother's been kidnapped. And I love how they edited Ice's reaction. Brother's been kidnapped. So. It's like the instant he starts to look surprised, they just cut him off. He's like, so. I feel like they did that because he just wasn't good at acting surprised. They probably did like five takes of him trying to look surprised and they're like, you know what? Just kind of look surprised for a second and we'll split the clip. Put the chip clip on the nips. <laughs> so Ice puts on his detective hat and he's like, yo, I hear a sound back there. It sounds construction-y. Where's that sound coming from? Where have I heard that before? I can't talk like Vanilla Ice unless I do this. The construction site. Yes. Oh, you mean this place? <laughs> so they head to that construction site that they were frolicking at, you know? Know, where the bad guys are and the bad guys have Tommy held up in some like tall building and the conversation between the bad guys is just so bizarre. The Martians have landed. Cute Martians too, yeah. huh? Look at them cute little bikes there, right? Little zigzag haircut. We climbed on the top. Get thing out of my eyes, you wish. You are our... You're not even close, fancy pants. Was this improvised? Ice and the crew, they search for a while, but they just, they can't find the bad guys. Just because we can't hear it doesn't mean they're not here. Thank you. Vanilla Ice for that stunning revelation. But did you use the correct forms of here and here? In your head, in here? See what I did there? <laughs> and I find it a little hard to believe that they can't see the bad guys considering that the burger spitter guy is like shining his flashlight out the window and then all up in Tommy's eyes. What's the lead Martian like? Is he your lead Martian? What's the lead Martian like? Why are we talking about Martians so much? Martian, 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 Martian. I also loved, I love this whole scene, but in particular, I love how they use the audio of this guy saying, you are ours twice. You are ours. You are ours. Wait, who is even shining this flashlight at at this point? The camera guy? <laughs> just keeps getting weirder. Vanilla Ice and them, they just give up. They're like, you know what? We can't find Tommy because he's not in plain sight out in this open desert. He's definitely not up there in that conspicuous building. The flashlight shining through the window. So they drive away and the bad guy just celebrates. He's like, going, going, gone, 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 gone. My vocal cords. They continue to just torture poor Tommy with a flashlight. They're just burning up his little retinas by the second when suddenly. Fast gun to your head, man. What? I don't hear anything. Now, wait a minute here. This movie suddenly seems unrealistic. Even if I were to entertain this and act like it was possible for them to bust through the wall of a second story building on motorcycles unharmed. I find it a little bit irresponsible and a tad careless because you guys had no idea where Tommy was. You could have killed him and his rat tail and then he would have never gone on to star in the movie Sandlot. They would have had to cast someone else. Someone like JTT or Devin Sawa. Can you imagine? Just kidding, I love both those guys. Anyway, I'm glad that this scene exists, honestly, because it's the best fight scene I've ever seen. <laughs> And yes, that means I think that it's even better than Alex versus The Rock. So Vanilla Ice defeats the bad guys. He straps them to a car. The way they're strapped to this car, it's like someone had to have crawled under the car to feed that cord back up and around the bad guys. And also I feel like it looks pretty loose. Like they could definitely get out of that. Just saying. The bad guys are very cavalier about having been caught. Thanks for ride. Yo ho. Why did I write yo ho? I don't know. I don't know, yo. Let's G-O. This shirt gave me pit stains. I might have B-O. I miss those weird infomercials with that lady Miss Cleo. <laughs> That was weird. Yo ho. So they return Tommy safe to his parents and his mom's like, oh my God, did they do this to your hair? Hell no. I did it myself. I sprayed it with Aquanet and put it into a weird little rat pony back at my occipital bone. <laughs> it's cool. Kat and John, you're having one last like romantic conversation. College girl. Smart ass. Wait, what? Well, I hope you like being a biker chick because you're not going to see me or my car again. Imagine that. He and Kat ride off into the distance, but not before sticking it to Nick one last time. Mm -hmm. 
Breaking Nick's face wasn't enough for Vanilla Ice. He also has to use his car as a bike ramp. Less Geo. <laughs> Woo! Girls and boys, that was pretty rough. And yet it wasn't. It is actually now my favorite movie. I'm not kidding. I'm gonna watch it all the time. So the budget for this film was $6 million. <laughs> Opening weekend in the U.S. <laughs> I'm sorry for laughing. Opening weekend in the US, it grossed $638,625. Dude, yikes. That might be the biggest like loss I've ever seen since doing this series. And I'm kind of shocked. I'm surprised more people like weren't interested in it because he was really popular at the time, wasn't he? And then the worldwide gross was $1,193,062. I feel like this movie is so bad that it's so wonderful and just the most 90s thing I've ever seen and therefore I'm obsessed with it. I have more fun now watching bad movies that are supposed to be good than I do watching actual comedies so this is like this is my favorite movie. Let's read some reviews shall we? This review comes from an IMDB user named Amber Lee 77 and it is entitled Garbage at its Finest. Yeah Garbage at its Finest. When will Hollywood learn that most singers can't act? Not true. Ow. My lord why do they subject us to this? Drop that zero and get with the hero is my advice to anyone contemplating renting this little nugget of mismatched clothing and bad hair. That was kind of harsh. Here's another one by Film Buff 1970. Pop star movies are usually awful, but this is worse. Even Maduna has never made a movie this bad. One out of 10. I'm pretty sure Maduna has made bad movies before. Wait. Oh, sorry. Well, friends, that's it for me today. It was a blast, but uh, I got a G.O. By the way, for those of you who are still here, thank you so much for waiting for me while I was gone. It was a very long hiatus, and I'm so happy to be back. I missed you guys so much, and I missed reviewing terrible movies with you and laughing and doing this. <laughs> I'm back now, so as usual, leave your suggestions down below for bad movies, particularly ones like this. This like raised the bar so high for me in badness that I don't know if we're ever gonna top it. Let me know your thoughts, and I will see you guys in the next one. Love you. Bye. Drop it. You know, a horse. You're like a horse, man. Horse, like you ride on the back of a horse. All right, I get it. Yeah, see, a horse, not a cat. Oh yeah, cat. No horse. Oh, you idiot. Words of wisdom. Drop that zero and get with the hero. I, I ain't no zero. See you later, Dick. It's Nick, man. Yeah, it's Nick. Oh yeah, yeah. Nick. Now why don't you just go why, why would you go sing a swan, swan, man? Whatever that means. Gotta hold on to this feeling. <laughs> Lift. Be erect. Can't you be erect? Dang it, I have pit stains. Vanilla ice knocks on the door. Oh! So then we cut over to the sugar shack and my note says, these udders are jamming so hard. Udders? What did I mean by that? Turns out John's name is John Van Owen. Kind of like Rob Van Winkle. They kept the van. Cute. I told you stop frolicking! Neat. I'll be right over there. Right over where? The pickle farmer's house? Bobby Brown from the, um... She's my cherry pie. Cool drink of water and the swings of mine. Less Geo. Well, thank God he spelled that. <laughs> the song, it just it makes me feel alive, you know? Go, Ninja. Go, Ninja. Go. It's a great movie, you just gotta go see it, you know?